Hi, this is the Bet Central podcast. Let's make some profit. Hello and welcome to the Bet Central podcast powered by Bet Coza. My name is Mitch Makiana, your host, joined by two of my favorite people as we preview uh, this incredible uh, Champions League match day week. We've got Dave and Grant as our analysis as we dive into some of the big clashes this week. Gentlemen, let's start off with Braga, who will be playing host to, of course, uh, Real Madrid. Now, Madrid with a draw against Sevilla uh, this past weekend. Sergio Ramos uh, facing his old side. It was quite an entertaining game as a fan. A little bit frustrated with ref decisions, but I mean, you can see that Real team with that young core midfield is clicking under the guidance of experience of Tony Chris and Luka Modric. Grant, I'm going to come to you. Your thoughts? I mean, this is going to be a tough one for Braga. Yeah, it's a massive game for Braga. Um, obviously, it's a nice high-profile fixture for them. And they've had, I mean, a decent start in the Champions League. You know, the opening game against Napoli, they were pretty close to getting a point. They you know, conceded a, um, a goal in the 88th minute, an own goal to actually, you know, to lose a point um, at home against Napoli. And then in the second round, they actually got a really impressive victory to go to Union Berlin and, and win 3-2, scoring late this time in the 94th minute. So, I mean, they're in a good position in the in the group, or at least a decent position after two games. But now, two games against Real Madrid. Uh, so, it's often the way the, the group comes out with the, you know, with the double matchup on, on match day three and four, I mean, this often decides who goes through. And you'd think Braga will probably lose both games. So, and then it's going to come down to their, you know, the match day five and six fixtures. And I mean, looking at your, your Real team, I mean, they didn't really rest any players over the weekend. Went with their best eleven, and Ancelotti has been rotating a lot. So it clearly, feels like this game is not going to need fresh legs. They should be able to win the game without having rested players and having a whole bunch of fresh um, players for this one. And I mean, yeah, I mean, from what I gather from you, the Sevilla game was pretty weird. Like they probably should have won, and there were some weird refereeing decisions. Um, I mean, in the yeah. match stats looked relatively even in terms of like shots, expected goals, big chances, all that stuff. Sevilla put up a decent fight. And I mean, when we get to them later, they have, they have Arsenal this week. And yeah, they were fully focused on that Madrid game. So, I mean, look, it looks like Real Madrid will probably win. It's not, I wouldn't say, the most exciting batch of Tuesday fixtures we, we, you know, we've ever come across. Um, but I think Braga's good start makes this more exciting than it maybe would have been if they had one point or, or, or zero points after two matches. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing them properly. I think a bit more than I have in the past. But it's very hard to look past Real eking a win out, probably like they've done most of the season. Like Maybe it's going to be a one-goal margin because that's a lot of Real Madrid's wins have been that, you know, quite tight or needing late goals. So I'm not sure I'd go for a big scoreline, but I think Real will probably have enough to go to Portugal and get the full haul of points. I mean, Dave, I want to bring it to you on a betting front. You think of Real, strongest team of the weekend. A Grant was hinting they might just keep the same team against Braga. But also in the back of their minds, they know Sunday is a big one, Al Clasico. So in terms of betting, are you going to go in a little bit caution? Or, I mean, is it going to just be another regular day? What are some of your tips? Yeah, good morning, gents. I, I think um, Ancelotti will still play fairly much of his strongest eleven. I think, I mean, they started with two wins. Um, but you wouldn't want to lose, you know, momentum before Al Clasico. I think... And, you know, another win here, uh, in particular after the draw against Sevilla, you don't want to go into an El Clasico, you know, with two games that you haven't won, really. Um, so I think uh, he will want to also wrap the group up as soon as possible. You know, they started with two wins. Uh, another one would put them fairly much in the driving seat. And, and Braga are not on a, on a bad run of form. They've won the last five games in a row, uh, including that um, three-two win against uh, Union Berlin in in the previous uh, round when they, when they came back, uh, was it from two goals down? Yeah, from two goals down to win three-two, which is quite impressive. Um, so, uh, but overall, I think Real have too much. Um, even if Ancelotti decides to rest a little bit, uh, you know, we know the Champions League is their competition. They have that pedigree, uh, that mentality. Mm. Braga's games have had goals. Seven out of eight uh, had over 2.5 goals. Eight out of nine had both teams to score. So for the multi, I went uh, with the Real Madrid win or draw and over two, uh, over 1.5 goals in this game. 
All right, now we move on over to, I mean, we've spoken about them here, but let's jump into the Champions League game. Sevilla, they're going to be playing host to Arsenal. Both teams with draws over the weekend. Arsenal uh, quite doesn't come out firing, especially in that first half. I mean, that Raya mistake when he was off his line, caught by Mudrik. I think Sevilla are going to start looking at the movements of the goalkeeper and plus his nerves uh, against your team, uh, Grant. Sevilla taking on Arsenal. Uh, yeah, Sevilla's form this season hasn't been the greatest. They've, they've only collected quite a few draws. But what's your take in this one, Grant? Yeah, it's a big game for Arsenal because they took their eye off the ball slightly in a match day two, went to Lance and, and lost 2-1 ahead of playing Man City. So you could you could understand slightly why they you know their attention had been diverted somewhat. But then it does make this game a lot more important. They need to actually go to you know to Spain and I say at least avoid defeat and then win you know win the home return game in a couple of weeks' time. Um, as you say, Sevilla haven't been great this season. They they won the Europa League and they you know kept um, Mendelevar on you know after his such you know he did a great job as a caretaker coach. But I think it often doesn't work. You know, you bring a caretaker in, he does well in Europe, and you keep him on it. He invariably gets sacked if the following season after. Yeah, I mean, he got sacked in October. It usually happens in around October, November. I mean, the season's been a bit of a bit of a mess. I mean, a lot of defeats at the start. They've only won two of their matches all season and and recently three draws. Um, and yeah, last time out, a 2-2 draw at, at PSV wasn't a bad Champions League result. But the one no home game in the, in um, your match day one against Lance, I think, will be could be proved damaging, especially if they lose here. Yeah. Um, and Arsenal, I mean, there's something wrong with them at Chelsea. I mean, yeah, they came back to draw 2-2, but they were just completely off it. I mean, everything about their performance was a long way below what you expect from Arsenal. Um, Arteta also doing some weird things, starting Jorginho, and then he had Jorginho with Sinchenko inverting, and then Rice playing quite high up, like inside left. That didn't really work. When he finally made subs and he got Havertz on and, and you know, Trossard came on for Martinelli, who'd been um, pretty quiet, you know, kind of shackled by Gusto. Um, then Arsenal came back to draw 2-2, which shows their character but and their quality, but they they, they weren't really weren't really at it. Um, maybe just the international break. Um, and a couple of guys come back from injury. Saka looked pretty rusty, Martinelli a bit rusty. So, look, they should be more match fit here. And I think they can go to Sevilla and win, especially because of Sevilla's form, Sevilla's general lack of pedigree in this competition in general. I mean, they keep winning the Europa League, but as soon as they get put in this competition, yeah, they just look out of their depth. I mean, yeah, they've won one match in this competition in the last two years. Obviously, they haven't played every season in this, you know, in, in the competition, but they've been thrashed at home by City and Dortmund in that time. Um, their home record isn't anything special. So I think Arsenal will, will go and win this match much more um, awake for this fixture than they were at Stamford Bridge and... Maybe a little bit of forewarning there that you know if they're not on the game, teams can hurt them. Um, so I'll give Arsenal to win on the road, and especially because they lost last time, it actually gives me more confidence that they'll win this game because they need to. And as, a, a, like another defeat would actually put them in a bit of trouble, um, which they want to avoid. So Arsenal win. I mean, Dave, on a betting front, I think it's safe to say that both of these teams can score goals but can also concede some. So, what's your thoughts? How would you be tackling this fixture? Yeah, pretty much like um, like Grant was saying already. I think um, Arsenal cannot afford to lose this game after they lost uh, to Lawrence. Otherwise, they're getting on a bit of pressure in in the Champions League. You know, uh, with uh, only the the first win, uh, they're clearly the favorites in this group. Um, Sevilla are not. You know, are not that easy. They have, I know they haven't done well in the Champions League, that, but obviously they have done well in, in the Europa League. So they know how to win big games uh, in European competition. Um, but like Grant said, it's, you know, it's not just three, three draws in the last three games. It's five draws in the last seven games. <laughs> so something just doesn't seem to click um, there. You know, they win 1-5-1, then they lose uh, to Barcelona. Obviously, the defeats in the beginning of the season didn't help. Um, I think Arsenal was a case of, you know, like Grant also mentioned, there is sometimes after international breaks where some teams just, you know, don't click because some of the international players are away during that time and so on. It's like I'm always a bit cautious in particular with betting uh, after the international break. Uh, and yeah, this was one of the games that proved proved sort of that theory. At least they came back um, to draw for, for this game, um, for the multi, for, for Betcoza. I did go a bit more cautious than Grant. Uh, just uh, selected an Arsenal draw or win. Uh, 
at 1.25 odds, which is which is fine for the for the train. Uh, but I do think that they should uh, win this game as well. Now, now of course, we move on over to PSG taking on AC Milan. AC Milan lost yesterday one 0 to Juventus. And when you look at the Champions League form, two draws, both of them being 0-0. PSG, on the other hand, Grant, uh, they won their first fixture, but of course travelled to St. James's Park and Newcastle was up to it, and they chipped in four goals against them. So PSG need to bounce back in this one, and you feel like AC Milan needs three points. So it's a must-win for both sides. Mm. Yeah, I think this would be a really good game. I mean, yeah, Milan, Milan lost to um, you know to Juve on Sunday evening, but yeah, they were out. They were without um, you know Mike Manian in goal suspended. Their second choice keeper was out injured, and then of course um, you know Tio got sent off after forty minutes. Um, they have a lot of injuries. You know, Loftus Cheek, Krunic, Benesso, all in midfield, all out. Um, so they were they were pretty. And I mean, and um, Hernandez at left back, and they haven't even got a backup left back in their squad. So it was Florenzi who moved over there. So I think it wasn't that uh, surprising that that happened. And I think with a lot of those players back, you know, my name will be back and Nandes is back from suspension. That definitely strengthens their defence. Obviously, Teal isn't, he, he, you know, he's fine to play in the Champions League. His suspension doesn't come in, um, you know, to European competition. So I think they'll be a lot better equipped to go to PSG. Um, PSG yeah. got a win this weekend, which I was, I wouldn't say I was surprised by, but I, I wouldn't have been super keen to bet on them against Strasbourg because of how they often drop points around Champions League fixtures. And saying that they also rested a lot of players, which was, um, yeah, it was really good. I mean, guys like Hakimi, Skriniar, Ugarte, you know, who'd, who'd done a lot of traveling in, in the international break, they were all given full rests. Dembele and, um, you know, Colin Moani both only had about half an hour each off the bench, so they're fully fresh. I think that's really, you know, bodes well for PSG in this fixture. I mean, PSG going to Newcastle were awful. Um, I don't quite know what Enrique was doing with his team there because. He decided to kind of just play two in midfield and go to Mbele, Mbappe, um, Colorado Moani and Gonzalo Ramos as like a front four. And the team just felt broken. I mean, Newcastle easily pressed up on those two midfielders, um, broke up their, their build up and lots of you know high turnovers. And yeah, PSG was just blown away by the intensity of Newcastle. Obviously, we always talk about PSG not playing enough tough games in the domestic league. And then if you face a team that can play 100 miles an hour... Um, especially an English team, then, yeah, they come up short. But it's not like that against Milan. I mean, I think Milan are a little bit pedestrian at the moment with that midfield so depleted. So, I mean, look, PSG need a win. Um, they've responded well to that defeat against Newcastle. So, I think they'll probably they'll probably get a victory in this game, um, keep the group nice and interesting. And then Milan are in big trouble because they've had two normal draws. If they were to drop, if if, if they were to get no points, yeah, then it basically makes their, their match their four game against PSG at home a, a must win. Then they probably have to beat. They would have to go to Newcastle and get something. It's going to be quite bad. So I worry about Milan's prospects of progression. I think PSG will win the game, um, especially with all their fresh legs um, and all Milan's injuries. So yeah, PSG victory in this one, I think. Uh, Dave, your thoughts on the betting front? I mean, it, it, AC Milan are in a tough position with a loss against Juventus, now playing PSG after two draws in the Champions League. Plus, in the back of their mind, they're going to be thinking about Napoli on the weekend. It's yeah, it's just such a tricky time. But in terms of betting, how would you go about it? Because at this point, I just I just have a feeling that Kylian Mbappe is definitely going to be one of the players that are going to be on the score sheet. Yeah, and he obviously um, scored on the weekend. You know, he he went through uh, a lot of phases uh, in the league where he hadn't scored. Um, but obviously, also he he was on. On goals back for for France during the international break, which gave him a bit of confidence, and then he scored on on the weekend, uh, you know, which will do him good. Uh, it was a penalty, but you know, it doesn't really matter in the end of the day. Uh, like Grant just said, Milan are weird. Um, it's not just the two draws this season that they had; both of them don't know. Like they are a terrible team to predict for 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 punters, you know, in the Champions League. Because in the league games, they usually have some goals. And then in the Champions League, they dry out completely. But they are uh, five games without a win uh, in the Champions League since they beat uh, Napoli in, in, I think it was the quarterfinal in the first leg. And then uh, they drew against Napoli second leg and they lost both games against Inter. And then obviously the start to the season. So they're really difficult uh, to predict. They're really not doing that great in the Champions League. Um, 
PSG, I think they they need a win. They need to come back after that uh, defeat, humbling defeat against Newcastle. Uh, because there's also Dortmund still in the group who haven't started that well, but are always dangerous and often make it out of the group. Uh, you know, in particular uh, with the with the home um, game still upcoming. Mm. For the multi, I actually left this game out. I wasn't hundred percent sure. Like, you know, like Grant said, PSG in the Champions League, they're not always uh, switched on. I, I think they should they should win this game, but um, uh, you know, uh, I just left it out. I couldn't decide on goals or anything. Um, so yeah, we can move on to the next one. And then, of course, uh, another big clash: Newcastle will be playing host to Dortmund. Uh, now, of course, Dortmund losing one game and then drawing the other. St James's Park seems like a fortress uh, this season. You know, in the league as well as Champions League, it's going to be tough to to side with Dortmund in this one, Grant. I mean. You know Newcastle are going to be up for it. They're going to be looking at things. If they collect three points here, knowing what the situation is with PSG and um, and the other fixture, I think they're going to be confident in getting those three points and at least topping the group so they can secure a decent place finish going into the knockouts. Yeah, I wasn't surprised Newcastle beat PSG at home. I, the, you know, St. James's Park is going to be rocking for these these three home games in the in the group stage. And, you know, PSG actually cruised past Dortmund. You know, Dortmund's last um, away Champions League game, pretty one-sided affair. And Newcastle smashed PSG. I know that it doesn't always work like that, but I think Newcastle are big favourites, especially because of how well they defended in that PSG game. I mean, they limited them to two shots on target, despite playing with, you know, PSG playing with basically four forwards, as, as I mentioned. So Newcastle were highly impressive there. And... When you know, we did our Premier League podcast, I thought Newcastle might be slightly distracted in their Premier League match this weekend, but they, they smashed Palace, uh, managed to rotate their side a little bit as well. Um, just a word for you know Jamal Lascelles, who basically hadn't played any football in the last 18 months. He's come in for Sven Botman and he's been outstanding covering um, his loss, the Dutchman's loss. Um, he was great against PSG in the first leg as well. So, I mean, I th- for me, I think Newcastle will probably win again at home and then they'll be on... Seven points from three games. They go to Dortmund in round four. They could try and eke out a normal draw. And then, as you say, they, there's a good chance they could top this group ahead of PSG. And that would give them a much better draw in the... In, well, hopefully, give them a much better chance of a good draw in the in the next stage. Um, but I think they're going to be reliant on their home on their home form. So I think they'll beat Dortmund. Um, I'm sure Dave will give some more insight, you know, insight into how the Germans have been playing. Um, but it hasn't been a great start to the Champions League campaign. They didn't really do enough at home against Milan. So, yeah, I, I fancy Eddie Howe's boys to make it six points from six. The high octane performance again and maybe a couple of goals. Look, Dave, I think it helps that Dortmund got a longer rest. I mean, only playing on Friday and getting a 1-0 victory going to that. But trying to bet on them at St. James's Park is going to be quite difficult to find some value, at least on the Dortmund side. But I think what we can expect is goals, right? Yeah, I mean, you both are saying there's goals. I also um, selected um, over 1.5 goals in this game for the for the multi. Uh, I think there's good, there's decent value in it because we've seen, you know, Newcastle. I don't know, they just look so impressive many many of the times. Obviously, they they struggled a little bit in the beginning of the season, but you know, it wasn't the easy start uh, with um, Man City, Liverpool, and and Brighton, uh, who at that time was still in good form. But ever since they have gone unbeaten in eight games, uh, one six of them. Uh, I think also now that they've beaten um, PSG 4-1 in the Champions League will give them massive uh, momentum. At home in particular, they look uh, really strong. They score, they're free scoring. Uh, really impressed with what Eddie Howe is doing. Uh, their Dortmund haven't done all that bad on their side. They're still unbeaten in the Bundesliga as well. The 2-0 defeat to PSG in the Champions League was their only loss this campaign. But there's something that often doesn't feel right about them. They do get results because they have the quality, but they're not playing all that well. Um, and sometimes they're riding a bit on their luck. Um, that said, they have won four out of the five games since they lost to PSG. Only the, the Milan game was their only draw. Um, so they should have some confidence. Um, I, I don't think they have enough to, to beat uh, Newcastle, but they will probably hope... Uh, to at least not lose, you know, to keep their chances of, of progressing alive. 
And like I said, for the multi, I just went uh, with over 1.5 goals. I think um, both teams, you know, have seen goals in their games and uh, we hope it continues in the Champions League. Well, there we go. That's all the big fixtures. But before we get out of here, uh, Dave, can you just uh, give me that code for the multi this week? Yes, let me just quickly run through it uh, very, very quickly. Uh, I have Galatasaray against Bayern. Quite an interesting game. Both teams unbeaten in over 10 games. Uh, but I do think Bayern are too strong. Uh, Bayern win or draw and over 1.5 goals. Inter Milan against Salzburg, uh, a home win. United uh, against Copenhagen. I think United should win after they won on the weekend. Uh, like we said, Sevilla against Arsenal. Uh, Arsenal win or draw. Union Berlin against New uh, Napoli. Over 1.5 goals. Uh, Braga against Real Madrid. Uh, Real all win and over 1.5 goals. Barca against Shakhtar. Uh, Barca home win. RB Leipzig against uh, Bretska Belgrade. A home win. Uh, Newcastle Dortmund, like we said, over 1.5. City home win against... No, City 2 win at Young Boys. Uh, Celtic against Atletico. Uh, Atletico win or draw. And Antwerp against Porto. Porto win or draw. Uh, 12 games this week. Quite a, quite a few more than, than usual. Um, gives us 16.5 odds. And the code is TDRG7. TDRG7. Yeah, good luck to everyone. There we go. Champions League is back. Oh, man, I can't wait. Listen, let us know how you will be betting by simply tagging us at BetCoza. Uh, I've been Mitch McKenna. That's been Grant. That's been Dave. We'll see you again next week. Peace. Cheers, guys. Cheers.